All right, somebody shared with me this video. Let's check it out. Is it possible that the Bible actually reveals the location where Satan lives? Check this out. In Revelation chapter 2, verse 13, Jesus said, I know where you dwell. It's where Satan's throne is. And he said it's the same city that St. Antipas was martyred in. So we just have to find out what that city is. Well, some researchers tell us that St. Antipas was martyred under the reign of Nero in a city called Lyon, or today, Geneva, Switzerland. But wait till you find out what's been happening in Geneva, Switzerland. Geneva is the home of an organization called CERN, whose logo just happens to be three sixes. CERN actually has a device that shoots particles at each other, attempting to split between the natural and the supernatural realm. Geneva is also the home to some primary bases for the World Economic Forum and the World Health Organization. <clears throat> and they also have this big ugly statue of the god Shiva who's known as the Destroyer. Click the link in my comments for the full story. Yeah, no, don't worry about that. Alright, so let's go over this. So this is from Revelation 2. And we're going to read what it says let's do it this way I want to show you something first of all let's do let's go this way oh where's that at right there verse 4 <laughs> in Revelation chapter 1 John to the seven churches which are in Asia <clears throat> okay so, just to recap, this gentleman is saying that uh, that <laughs> that the Satan Sea is in Switzerland, and the Bible says that the seven this these letters are to the seven churches which are in Asia, or these messages or whatever you want to call them. So we go to Revelation 2, <clears throat> maybe, and, oh my goodness, what's going on here? I don't know what's happening. Alright, let's do it this way. Alright, so we go to uh, verse... here verse 12 so these short little messages to the seven churches uh, each church in Asia is mentioned okay and then specifically verse 12 it says and to the angel of the church in Pergamos these things saith he which has the sharp sword with two edges I know thy works and where thou dwellest even where Satan's seat is alright that's enough isn't it <clears throat> okay so we can deduce that the church is in Asia and the specific church is in Pergamos alright not Switzerland and then secondly the the CERN is a big super collider that shoots electricity in at each other right it's worthless there's no value it's completely fruitless nothing has come of it big waste of time it's not doing nothing they're not able to do anything productive with it it doesn't matter even if they did it has no bearing no relation with what we're reading in Revelation 2. Now you see here though there are interesting phrase here even where Satan's seat is. Now we could uh, just type in that word Satan and we could see uh, you know um, Clear back in the Old Testament, we have the mention of Satan. Lots of mentions, huh? 49 mentions of Satan. So, 
you know, we can go to <clears throat> Matthew 4. Uh, Jesus says, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now, we can go to Matthew 16. And Jesus says, But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Satan is not some guy sitting in a chair in Switzerland. Satan is the evil spirit of God, you know, the evil spirit in opposition to God. It's not a UFO alien being. It's not a humanoid. It's not a Nephilim. It's not none of that stuff. Now, it's just an, the opposition spirit of God. That's it. That's all it is. Now, we can scroll back up here in Revelation 2 and read this message to the church in Smyrna. These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried. Now, the devil in this situation here is not a humanoid, not a person sitting in a chair in Switzerland. This is in reference to somebody that is not of God. Again, a spirit that is in opposition to God. That's it. It's not complicated. All right, <clears throat> and so don't listen to these kids that never read their Bible. This is the best. Oops. Is it possible? All right, that's loud, isn't it? Okay. Don't listen to these kids that have no idea what the Bible says. And they don't even believe the Bible that they hold in their hands. I guarantee it. Absolutely guarantee it. And again, I'm going to show you that the secret, the key to understanding the Bible is faith. And 2 Corinthians 3 demonstrates that better than any verse, in my opinion. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil, <clears throat> excuse me, the veil shall be taken away. Why? What is the cause? It's all about faith. It's always been about faith. So if you have faith, you ought to be able to see this is not talking about a humanoid, a uh, Martian, an earthling. None of those things, all right? So don't, don't read too much. Don't read more into it than you need to, all right? You come up with these crazy, crazy ideas, and it's not any good. Does you no good at all. All right, that's all I got.